ER24. Real help. Real fast. 084124. I'm Christo Fente and the holidays are coming up and I'm heading towards the coast with my family along with all the other motorists from Joburg. I'm here at Halfway Toyota to see what kind of safety tips they can give me on checking my vehicle. Come along! Good morning, I'm Neville, Hi service Neville. consultant. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Likewise. Yeah. What Neville, can I, do for you today? I hope you can help us. Um, as you know, the holiday season is coming up. Yeah. And a lot of motorists will be heading out to the holiday destinations, Absolutely. especially to the coast. Mm -hmm. So long uh, roads will be taken by motorists. Mm -hmm. I need some guidance, please, if you can show me what, uh, what kind of tips you can give me to check your vehicle thoroughly before the long ride. Absolutely. Well, one of the fascinating things about that is to actually go through a number of things that I will mention to you. I would ask to walk around with you and um, talk about those fundamentals that you need to have them sorted out before you take off on the road. Yeah, sure, that would be great. We need to check the most important things yes. on the vehicle, which is the likes of your battery life yeah. on the vehicle. You need to know when last your battery was replaced on your vehicle, so and that we can you, how check. How would we know when last it was we replaced? We open up these little pots on the vehicle and we check the water on the vehicle. We've got ways of testing the battery to see if the cells are still all alive. And then your battery can last you right through the season. And that needs to be done in the workshop. Absolutely. Shop. Within the workshop, they can do that for you and give you printed out reports from the battery of the vehicle. All right. Okay. Now, number two, we need to check the oil levels on the vehicle. Mm -hmm. As per the service book on the car, you need to see when last was your service done. Yeah. Most of the times when you're doing the trips back down to Devon, it's mostly, what, 500 kilometers or so? Yeah. And yeah. you need to check when last was your Distance service done on the vehicle. The average trip, yeah. And that will determine the amount of oil that you've got in the vehicle. And Neville, what is the what is the consequence of overfilling your vehicle with oil? Look, you can flood the vehicle. It's it is important that you don't fill the vehicle by yourself. You bring it into a nearby right. um, service it's center. Not everybody's paying. Absolutely. Yeah. So that they will be able to know what needs to be done. Now, what the is vehicle. the importance of oil? What does it actually do? Oil on the vehicle is basically the lifespan of the engine of the vehicle. The vehicle runs. If your vehicle runs out of oil, then you can have your engine seized. So if the Big oil damage. on the vehicle absolutely, if the, if the oil on the vehicle is not changed, also that will mean damage on the engine of the vehicle. You can have oil sludge on the inside of the vehicle, and that you could have consequential damage on the, on right. the engine. So of the it's not only just checking the dips, it's checking the engine life, absolutely and looking absolutely. after your engine. Yeah. you're actually right. preserving the life of the yeah. engine by doing so. Sure. No, right. These two little containers, what do we do? Right, about? this is for the windshield wiper. Right. The water that very comes out of it is yes. very, very important, yeah. you know. In December, mostly, it rains. So you need to make sure one of the fundamentals about this, the wiper rubbers on the vehicle needs not to be cracked so right. that they don't smear on the windshield okay. of the vehicle and as you, you are able using to see it. Anything. Absolutely. And this one is your power steering fluid. This is checked regularly when they're doing the service on the vehicle, okay. which is quite important they do so because it helps you ease they're steering, steering especially the vehicles. So. Absolutely, with the, you've got your yeah. family and everything, yeah. which is your precious cargo you can never carry on your vehicle. That is important also. Also not overfilling that container. Absolutely, it's because you've marks. got measures on there, it's marked. That's what you need to fill it up to. Again, it's important for you to come through to the service centre. They will know the specifications of how to fill it. Yeah, right. In right. terms of the layman and looking after the hoses, I'm just looking yes. at the cooling hoses here. Lovely. What is something that the layman that they knows nothing about mechanics and engines? What can we pick up and maybe flag as, as something that might be looked at? Absolutely. One of the most important things when you're checking the cooling systems on the vehicle, they need to check if these are not cracked because it helps with the compression and the circulation of the water from your radiator to the actual engine. Okay. So these are important for you to see if they're not cracked so that you don't have any issue, issues with vehicle overheating and the lights. Right. Also, yeah. it's actually better to have it looked at by Absolutely. a mechanic because Absolutely. there's not only this one hose, there's a variety of, of hoses everywhere. Absolutely. You need somebody qualified for all of these things. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Right. This, this bottle, yeah. That bottle over there, that's a reservoir that keeps your antifreeze for your um, radiator on the vehicle. Okay. Some people do prefer that you put on water in there. The specifications are you need to have your antifreeze. It helps you with cold weathers on the vehicle so that you have an easy start on the vehicle. It doesn't freeze over and the vehicle does not start. All right. So you need to have that filled. I know regularly people at um, the filling stations, they would ask you if they can fill that up for you. Okay. By all means, 
if they do have the same specifications of what is on the inside of the vehicle, right, yes. then they need to have yes, that fluid. Every vehicle is because that transports water from the engine, or rather from the radiator to the engine of the vehicle. Very important. Cooling yes, the engine. absolutely. Because if you're going to drive a longer distance, remember your engine is going to heat up, the fan is going to kick in automatically, and that will help you circulate the water around the engine of okay. So this is a very important one Absolutely. next to the oil. Actually. Absolutely, that is right. important, yeah. Neverland, there's, a, there's another container that's right. right. That is for your brake fluid that enhances your brakes on the vehicle because you've got, remember your vehicle has got an ABS. Yes. So it enhances all of that. So you need to have that checked at all times, right. especially when you're doing this. Especially when you're doing um, the brakes on the vehicle, okay. which yeah. comes with the measurements of the brakes on the car, which is really, really important in the vehicle. The certain millimeters where you can say this is below spec and you need that replaced also. So when doing brakes, they remember to do the brake fluid um, um, measurements okay. also. Yeah. So all of these things play a very, very imperative important role imperative in, in the entire vehicle. Your oil, your water, your brakes, Absolutely. your windscreen wipers, Absolutely. everything. Uh, Other is, than being concerned yes. of you being safe on the road, your vehicle also needs to be in a healthy state so that you have a fair and good journey yeah. to wherever you go. You don't want to get stuck. Absolutely. So not just a fancy engine, you have to look after it. Yes. Yeah. What are the pointers here on one of the tires? Well Chris, the tire in the vehicle is basically um, what carries the weight of the vehicle. Yeah. That is of extreme importance because you need to look at, number one, the threading on the tires of the vehicle yeah. so that you don't create any imbalance on the vehicle, especially with the loads that you carry when you're taking off on holidays. Number two, all of these starts needs to be on the vehicle equal because if anything were to happen on your tire on the vehicle there will be problems with the vehicle right. number three the tire pressure if it is of important um, value on the vehicle okay. as per the manufacturer's specifications so you need to have them filled as per the manual or it's written on the door over there what you need to have it some people have it on 2.2 and some people have it on 2.3. It depends on the make of the vehicle. The make and also the so load that you will be Yes, carried. absolutely. Right. So that is of extreme importance. Now, yeah. because we drive on corrugated roads a lot of time, and we have, um, these are off-road vehicles, and you need to check the mag wheels if they are not uh, damaged on the inside, which is of right. importance. Because these are alloy rims and they're, they're quite soft, actually. Absolutely. You need to have those checked also so that you can see it's not creating an imbalance. Like, for instance, say you have gone over a ditch and you did not realize that you've damaged your rim. Yes. So as you're driving over a certain kilometer on the vehicle, say 120, which is our maximum speed, yeah. you will have the imbalance or a shudder on your front wheels in the vehicle. And that is a red light. Absolutely. Correct. You need to have those repaired before you can do anything, especially when you're going to take a longer trip. All right. And also in terms of balance balancing, all the, the, all the, all the tires need to be put One of the most important aspects in keeping the life of your tires in the vehicle is to do the wheel alignment. You need to do the wheel balancing at least every 20,000 kilometers. Yeah. And also the rotation of the tires. Absolutely, yeah. because it helps you with the weight that you're carrying in the vehicle. So it's of most importance that you have all of these things checked and verified. All right. Thank you, Nigel. Did you know that at any given time, one of these tires are only running on the surface of your hand, the same surface area of your hand, times four. That is the only contact your vehicle has with the road. We've come now to the rear of the vehicle, which I call the fun side of every vehicle. Yes. You need to take your toys with you after all we're going down at the coast. Yes. So this is your trailer and your tow hitch um, hook where you put in your trailer. Mm -hmm. So you need to see the competency of this to your trailer. You don't want to um, you know, obstruct people from seeing when you're yes, turning them on. Obviously, this has been uh, for the lighting for the back of your Absolutely. The curve and for, for the cover, yes. Yeah. So they need to check this if this works. And some of these vehicles they've got on the cluster, you can actually see when a trailer has been connected into the vehicle, yes. you'll be able to see all of that. So you need to check all of these if they're in order and they're actually able to give you the signals as you are towing your trailer. And also just checking the trailer and caravan that the lights are Absolutely. before you leave. Absolutely. So just one thing that I've noticed mm -hmm. also on the older vehicles there yes. bugs and everything you like to call in here. Yes. And, right. uh, you know, that can obstruct the uh, electrical workings of Look, that's the reason why you've got mostly these leads, the cap, yeah. so that you don't have all of these 
insects and what have you coming yes. inside. But you can have this checked at the time they inspect in your vehicle for lights and what have you. That is also imperative that they look at also. Okay. All right. Okay. Then we move in your spare wheel. This is quite important that you do have. Yes. Should you have a puncture or something along the way, you need to have your spare wheel yes. inflated yes. with the correct amount of air on the vehicle as the as per the. A manufacturer's um, specifications, if you would remember. And not uh, not to forget to inflate the spare wheel. Absolutely. When you're checking Every all the time when you're checking all the other tires, this yeah. also needs to be looked that at. That tends to be forgotten. Absolutely. Often. Absolutely. Right. And now. Oh, sorry, the, yeah. uh, this little plate here, what would this uh, indicate to me uh, regarding well, the towage? Yes, this little plate will indicate the amount of load your vehicle is able to, pick, to pull, which is now your trailer and what you're going to load onto the trailer. Now you need to adhere to all of these specifications. Okay, because this is made to only Absolutely. handle that kind of load. Absolutely. You cannot drag or tow something that's a little bit more over what the vehicle can carry. Okay. All right. All right. Now we're going to move inside the vehicle so that we can be able to see what's going on. Yeah. Your lights quite imperative that you take a look at them also. You need to see if your globes all are working in the vehicle. Your reverse lights also. That's yeah, so Absolutely. See the, the and you can be able to see that. Right. Can we get a move inside the vehicle? Well, I still call it the fun side of the vehicle. Yes. Now, one of the most important things you need to have when you're going on a long trip or journey, should I call it, you need to have a safety kit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, these are the goodies that are in the inside. You've got elastic plasters mm -hmm. in case anybody gets injured yeah. or bandages. So you've got have a, like a bigger first aid kit, absolutely with gloves and everything, which we featured in our, in our previous podcast or in our, in our video. Absolutely, you have got your puncture repair. Say, for instance, you're about forty kilometers away from where you can get help. You don't need to get anybody to come out and repair a tire puncture on your vehicle. That is going to help you with that. Is right. this a one-off use, Neville? Well, it depends on how much you use it. But we will always recommend for you to use it once, oh, yeah. so that you can get a refilled one. One canister like this, would this be sufficient to uh, inflate a large tire on this? Like on absolutely, this absolutely. It's just for you to get you to your next destination. Right, just to it's get a little for, bit of area. Absolutely, that's what you need to have. Well, as I said, Christo, I said this is the fun side. Not to spook anybody, but you've got a, a a torch over there, and that you can use in case you run out of lights and what have you in the vehicle. Yeah. You've got a pocket knife that you can Very use, handy. you've got yeah. gloves, and you've got a reflector, it's quite imperative because mostly you see people standing on the street repairing a vehicle and not even a single one of them has got a reflector that shows yes, that somebody yeah. um, is in danger or safety can be in first, danger. Always safety absolutely, first. absolutely. Your family. Mm -hmm. On the other side, you have got your jumper cables right. in case a vehicle does not start and perhaps your battery has failed yes. and you need to have Very that also. Handy to have. In case you need anybody to tow you um, to a nearest destination, you've got a tow hitch in there that you can use for your vehicle. Yeah. And this also goes right in the front of your vehicle. You've got a notch that you can use so that it does not break. You unscrew it over here and then you plug it onto the front of the right. vehicle. And it won't come loose. Absolutely, and, uh, it will not. Break. Yeah. Yes. So those are the things that you need to have in as far as the safety kit, kit is right. concerned. Yes. Maybe in terms of uh, the uh, jack and wheel spanner, what, what are the pointers you could give us there? One important factor I'm going to show you just now. Sure. On the side of the vehicle in here, you have got a tool kit on the vehicle. I'll just take it out so that you can have an idea of what I'm talking about. Then you have got your wheel spanners inside this little beautiful tool kit. So here are all the yes. things you'd need to, to change your tire with. Absolutely. This is your wheel spanner. It's important you've got the right size. You do not want to get stuck and you do not have the right size of Correct. the wheel yeah. spanner because in the vehicle. not all wheel spanners Absolutely, are they're not manufactured to be the same. Yeah. Absolutely. So now you've got your screwdrivers. You've got a little bit of spanners that you need on the vehicle in case anything breaks on the vehicle. And, you and you'll need. be able to fix it. Absolutely, you do have it. Your jack, you've got it over there and you've got this little tool to um, to loosen it with yeah. and it's got a joiner in here that you can use also so that you can have an extension to have it underneath the vehicle and you can wheel it out. Also the jack is important, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, 
in terms of the mass of the vehicle absolutely the correct check that would be able to lift the car absolutely it's, it, it is of imperative importance that you've got the correct check on the vehicle and i know people have a tendency of borrowing you one another yes yes but yeah. now the size and the weight of the vehicle is not the same all these small want. things are imperative big, big yes. safety issues then you have the reflector on the vehicle should you get stuck on the side of the road you need to have the reflector on the vehicle so that you can put it a certain kilometers away from you or rather meters away from your vehicle to have it so that you are able to notify people that um, I have an emergency broken down, broken down and, sure. and um, we're busy with the yeah. yes. in correlation with your reflective clip absolutely you do need to have all of that which is quite important that you need to have on the vehicle so all of these they play an important factor in the vehicle simply because they are your help needs on the vehicle as you're driving, you've got backup through your first aid kit, you've got backup on your tools, you've got backup on your jack, oh. and all of these safety features, they come quite handy. So this is now the interior of the vehicle. Sure do feel as comfortable here, don't beautiful it? vehicle. Well, these are the, now your watch guards on the vehicle. I'm going to start on the cluster of the car. Yeah, which is number one with all absolutely. The and all the lights. absolutely you've got all your warning lights you've got your handbrake warning light that is over there you've got your warning um, that your doors are open in the vehicle right. you've got the oil warning levels mm -hmm. on the vehicle you've got the battery warning light that shows you that the battery is charging on the vehicle you've got the engine warning light okay. if anything goes wrong with the engine of the vehicle that will pop out so right. so that you may not ignore it it's very, very important. So there's a warning light that motorists have to Absolutely. either pull over or get to the nearest Absolutely. Switch. No matter the advance um, of the, no matter how advanced your technology may be on the vehicle, when your engine warning light pops up in the vehicle, it means wrong. absolutely something is wrong and you need to get it checked immediately. Yeah. Now you've got where it shows you your kilometers, the kilometer range, which is quite important for you to see your odometer. When is your vehicle due for service? Then you can see the odometer is about 32. And when it goes, your first service, say for instance, is at 10,000, 20,000 or 30,000, your intervals. So that's what's going to be a guideline for you to see when is your next service due. Nero, in terms of the service, how far over can one go? Look, there is a grace period. It depends from certain vehicle manufacturers. Some would say a thousand kilometers over or a thousand two hundred kilometers right, over. So you'll yes. still be safe with Absolutely, the you'll still be safe. Say, for instance, you're in a remote area, you're not able to come to a place where you can find a service center. You can still drive for at least a thousand kilometers. All right, yeah. yeah. And then never, never on the on the right here we see the the heat gauge. Uh, mm -hmm. We spoke earlier mm -hmm. about the cooling. Absolutely. And if something goes wrong with the cooling of the engine, absolutely, um, that would be your indication also yes. to pull over very quickly. Yes, that's where you see your levels on the vehicle of how much your engine is heating up in the vehicle. That will be determined by whatever goes on from the engine. Then you will get then the feedback from either the engine warning light or you see your temperature going up. Um, which is going to be abnormal in the vehicle, so then you need to right. pay attention Especially to that Especially people that would be towing heavy Absolutely. caravans and, and heavy loads. Absolutely. That the engine is under strain and it would cause mm -hmm. um, an increase in heat. Yeah. And you've got, um, not to mention your fuel gauge, to see how much you're spending on your that is very important. fuel. Very important. Yeah, yeah. You need an indication of that so that you do not get stuck on the side of the road. So that's an indicator for you to be able to see how much fuel you've got in the yeah. vehicle. Uh, never, Besides the cluster here for the driver, what else um, around the vehicle would the driver have to pay attention to safety-wise? Uh, well, I would like to believe when you get tested for a driver's license, one of the most important things, I think it's about a five-point check that you have on the vehicle, mm -hmm. which mostly your rear view mirror, you yeah. have got to ensure that there's no obstruction for you to see the rear of the vehicle. Oh, so you'll have to have clear view Absolutely. out of the back window. That you need to have, whether you've got passengers or not, it's always advisable not to have anything that's lying at the back so that you're not able to see the rear of the vehicle. All right. yes. And you need to check your side mirrors on the vehicle, mm -hmm. which is quite imperative also, mm -hmm. so that you driving, you have the awareness of what's going on besides you, in front of you, or right. Right behind you. One mirror is not enough to just Absolutely. Look at the that is quite important. Now, you need to check of those things. It's important. Right. In an event where it's a sunny day, you need to have your sun visors mm -hmm. to make sure that they're not falling apart. 
and they're sitting or situated in the right position. To make sure these uh, absolutely they secure. Are fixed and secure. Absolutely. So you do need you, you do you do need, you do need those mm -hmm. to have them um, done on the vehicle. Most importantly, your hooter on the vehicle mm -hmm. that has got to be in in order. Which the tone needs not to change. You need to have it as per the manufacturer's specifications. Okay. Yeah. You need to have the hooter to make whoever that's driving in front besides you aware that you're on yes. the road if and when anything yeah, happens to, to try and avoid a Absolutely. collision with someone else yes. some of these vehicles they come in the steering of the vehicle with controls of the radio you do not want to be fiddling on the side trying to play a cd yes. you've got everything in your controls and those are the most important things you need to see if they're working on the vehicle so that your focus is mainly on the road because whoever that you carry in the car is in your hands as a driver so that's something we can take on the long road also, your seat belts are very important to check. Yes, there is always a big hype about seat belts, why not to wear, why to wear them, they might cause injury, they might not. It is the important thing on your vehicle. So, how do you check whether your seat belt is working correctly? Normally, a rule of thumb, grab it and just give it a good yank. When it looks like that, it usually is working. Also, adjust the height so it doesn't catch onto your neck, which makes the ride very uncomfortable. Mm. Don't forget the little baby seats for the little ones at the back. Make sure that you check the vehicle's requirements for, the, for adjusting the seat correctly. Mm. 